Hello, I'm Nicholas Fetty, and I needed to start putting together my notes. Um, sorry to those of you listening who've been waiting a long time. Uh, there's a lot in my mind about the adsorption cooling model, and it's kind of scattered around in a bunch of different places. So I thought I'd, I'd try to go through this kind of an outline. So first of all, how did I get involved in the adsorption model? Uh, I work in the field and lab group. We worked on a project for a company called Aora Solar, and I'm going to show you a little bit of slideshow from them, what we did for them. So they're using a gas hybrid uh, solar <clears throat> power system. It has some waste heat. This is, uh, let me see, solar power would come into here. This is a turbine, micro turbine. The air is open cycle Brayton. So it comes in here, goes through the turbine and then comes out. And this is an optional heat recovery heat exchanger unit. So we were extracting, the, uh, planning to extract the waste heat or exhaust heat from this unit and send it down by some heat transport system and then we would be able to utilize it. So we'd have some heat exchange system and we'd set up some application that uses heat. And particularly um, one of the best options we think would be uh, cooling plus possibly something else. Uh, so one of the tasks I focused on was comparing different off the shelf and slightly modified chiller systems uh, absorption being a big focus because of efficiency, but also wanting to look at adsorption because of its simplic simplicity, durability. And in, in terms of compa uh, comparison, what I wanted to do is optimize a given chiller for the design conditions. So what is the ambient temperature? What is the temperature and, and <clears throat> flow rate in the heat source? So I would adjust the values of these heat exchanger areas uh, to get the most cooling for a given amount of cost. So that's kind of what I was going for for the models, is to have something that would allow me to vary the heat exchanger areas, uh, output how much cooling capacity for given temperature conditions, and then compare those. I don't think there's anything else here that's really useful to show you from this one. Obviously, a lot of people have reviewed cooling cycles, and um, I'm going to mention this <clears throat> work in a little while. Uh, so what else? That presentation is pretty similar to my prospectus for my PhD. Um, I gave, I forget exactly when, March, April 2016. About that same time, another company approached us from Phoenix. This is from Israel. And uh, wanted to integrate the cooling system with their um, solar thermal panel. This is a CSP micro turbine. So the solar thermal panel is, is producing a lower temperature, um, lower concentration, but uh, it could still be used for generating cooling. So at that same time, we also did some, some work for them. Uh, we began some work. Also, April 2016. And uh, Sammy, my lab partner, has been continuing that mostly. What else? I think that's about it. So let me see if I can show you anything here. So for solar thermics, we did produce. Um, uh, at that time, some back 
background. And this doesn't really get into the modeling, just to check. There's a revision on that after I did some more modeling. It's about the same. So if you need, you can check on that. Uh, so I'm going to be mentioning some software type things that I use to track my work. Big one is Google Drive. So we have a Google Drive folder for the work we did for Aora. And that's where you're going to find most of the stuff I've produced. So this would be under Task C folder. And um, you'll find there's an adsorption modeling literature review. I can highlight that. It's the latest one. There's in this folder, this is what I'm writing on now. Uh, this is a little bit of math, behind the scenes math, when I was looking over old models, notes on that. And this is what I'm going to be getting to next. Um, we also use Git and GitHub. So Git is software that you download on your computer. And you can use a command line version or you can use a graphical version like this. Um, so I ha <coughs> have a Git repository for um, most of the code that I write. This one is a local repository for MATLAB code, uh, which I'm going to be touching on in the, in the next section of the presentation. Um, obviously, these three, MATLAB, EES, Python, those are tools we use. And there's a couple other things. Cool prop. This is a library for fluid properties that could be useful. Really only use it for water in the current code. But you can uh, install it uh, and use it for a lot of variety of languages now. You choose um, the language MATLAB if you need EES. And um, Python are the ones I use. Lastly, uh, there's another library that is mentioned in the code. It's not required to use this. However, we have a copy of it in our lab. And let me see if there's any description here. Well, that's basically reference fluid thermodynamic and transport properties. So that can be called from code in a variety of ways. Um, again, basically just used to compare water properties and, and baselining the code. And now I want to go over, what should I go over next? Let's pause.